So you've just received your new CFFA 3000 card, and you're wondering what to do next. Let's talk about how to get your new card set up. There's documentation on the included CD, so you can refer to that for more detailed information. When unpacking the card, be sure to first touch the power supply of your Apple II to discharge any static electricity you may be carrying. The first order of business is to check on the configuration dip switches. Most of the time, you can leave them all in the up position. If you are installing your CFFA 3000 in an Apple II GS, flip switch number 7 down. If you are installing in an Apple III, flip both switches 7 and 4 down. The CFFA 3000 has two places to plug in your media, a compact flashcard port and a USB port. You can use one or the other, or both. The only restriction is that firmware updates must come from a compact flashcard plugged into the compact flashcard port. It's perfectly fine to add an extension cord to either the USB or compact flashcard port. Just remember, it's not possible to add a USB hub device to the CFFA 3000. This setup will not work. So you have seven slots to choose from in your Apple II. Which one is the right one for your CFFA 3000? That depends. Here are a few different scenarios to help you decide which one to use. You could install the CFFA 3000 in slot 7 for use as a virtual hard drive. That lets you keep your current Disk 2 controller in slot 6. You could then configure the virtual Disk 2 function of the CFFA 3000 to use some other slot. The advantage of this configuration is that you have a bootable virtual hard drive in slot 7 while maintaining your real floppy disks in slot 6. Another way to set up your CFFA 3000 is to insert it in slot 6 and also configure the Virtual Disk 2 function to use slot 6. This has the advantage of only using one physical slot, and it lets you use virtual floppy disks in slot 6. The downside is that your real floppy controller would have to go elsewhere, and you lose the Virtual Hard Drive Smart Port function of the CFFA 3000. Maybe you want to keep your current storage devices where they are, and just have the CFFA 3000 somewhere else altogether. No problem. Use some other unoccupied slot for the CFFA 3000 and use it wherever it is. This is a good setup if you want to make backup copies of your existing drives. Here's the scenario we'll be using for the rest of the setup video. We'll use the CFFA 3000 in slot 7 with the virtual disk support in slot 6. The advantage of this setup is that everything is virtual. The disadvantage is that there's no real floppy disk in slot 6. In fact, you can't have any other card plugged into the physical slot 6 when you're configuring the CFFA 3000 to use slot 6 for the Virtual Disk 2 function. So let's go ahead and plug the CFFA 3000 into an unenhanced Apple IIe in slot 7. We'll also feed an extension cord through the back to make inserting and removing USB sticks easier. Now let's boot the machine. To make the CFFA 3000 menu pop up, we enter PR number 7, the slot we plugged the card into, and quickly hit the M key afterwards. And now we'll plug in a USB stick. You can see it become ready in the upper left corner of the Apple II screen. Now let's zoom in on the Apple II screen. Since this is an unenhanced Apple IIe, we'll want to enable a special feature of the CFFA 3000. Remember, we get to the menu system with PR number 7 and quickly hitting the M key. Once in the menus, the A and Z keys move up and down respectively if you don't have up and down arrow keys. You can also just type the number of a selection of a menu. Select 7, Other Settings, from the main menu. Then select 6, Auto Boot Older Apples. Set this to Yes with the right arrow key. This setting is for original Apple IIs through the unenhanced Apple IIe machine. It restricts the smart port somewhat, but it allows these older machines to start up directly from the CFFA 3000. 
Let's also take this opportunity to give ourselves a full second to hit the M key on boot up to bring up the CFFA 3000 menu. Hit escape to back out to the main menu and we can now power down and reboot. Now let's assign the virtual disk 2 to slot number 6. As usual, hit the M key on boot up. Scroll to item number 1, disk 2 slot, and use the arrow keys to select slot 6, the slot most commonly used for floppy drives. Now, if you already have a real physical floppy controller in slot 6, you can't have the CFFA host its virtual floppies in that slot at the same time. You need to choose one or the other, as we discussed earlier. DOS programs tend to make this slot 6 assumption more than ProDOS, so whichever type of disk, real or virtual, you most likely want to use with DOS, choose that one to be your slot 6. Now that we've assigned the CFFA 3000 to host virtual floppies in slot 6, let's pick a virtual disk image to boot. Select Menu Item 2, Disk 2 Assignments, and hit Return. You can see we have three disk images copied to our USB stick. We'll scroll down to the DOS 3.3 System Master image we downloaded from the internet and hit the 1 key to insert it in the first virtual floppy disk. Now all we have to do is back out and reboot. You can see how quickly that comes up, and this is not even an accelerated Apple IIe. For games and other disk timing sensitive applications, it will be important to turn off the Patch DOS RWTS for Speed setting in the Other Settings menu. We'll set that menu item to No now. Rebooting, you can tell the difference in boot speed. It's slower than it was before, but will work better for some games. Now let's go into the CFFA 3000 Disk 2 Assignment screen and add a ProDOS boot disk. We select it as before and hit 1 to add it to the queue of disks available to Virtual Drive 1. To choose which floppy image is actually active in a list of disks, you can use the optional Remote button, or hit Tab or Control i to change columns, then hit the A and Z keys, or the up and down arrow keys, to move among selections. Hit return to pick which one will become active. Reboot slot 6, and now the ProDOS disk will boot for us. We can insert whatever virtual floppy disk image we like using this technique. The only way to change which disk is active while the Apple II is actually running a program, though, is to use the remote unless you've got an Apple II GS, in which case you can get to the CFFA 3000 configuration via Classic Desk Accessory menu. There's your introduction to the initial setup of the CFFA 3000. Consult your user manual for more details, or visit the forum on drare.net to ask any questions you might have.